Hello, this is Dr. Aaron Moreland again uh, doing part two of vaccinations. Have vaccines truly eradicated diseases? And so at the start we talked about potentially uh, some of the diseases that we think of when we think of diseases that have been eradicated uh, from smallpox to polio. Now we're just talking about uh, measles and not necessarily talking whether measles had, the measles vaccine has eradicated the disease. We're really talking about uh, mortality and is there a need for a vaccine in a disease where the mortality rate is fairly low. So let's just continue to talk about uh, measles. Again, we look at measles in 1920. The mortality rate was about 1.6% of the people that would get uh, measles would die from it. And then uh, back in 1955, according to CDC statistics, we look at uh, what they were seeing was about 3 in 10 million people would be dying from, from measles, although most people were getting measles. In fact, it was very encouraged to go get measles and they would have measles parties very similar to what um, chickenpox parties were happening in the 70s and 80s and even now you'll see some people doing chickenpox parties but uh, it really wasn't until 1962 that the measles vaccine program began and so we can see a decline in mortality in measles uh, much uh, sooner than we saw um, uh, the uh, vaccine come out and then we were looking at the statistics again just looking at uh, uh, prior to 1962, uh, a large decline in mortality rate in measles, again, probably due to sanitation, stress levels decreased, nutrition improved, and having refrigeration as well that was all played a part in helping people survive measles. Also looking at this, uh, um, this graph, we can still see the same thing. We see that measles were declining uh, pretty significantly, at least the uh, death rate was declining significantly uh, before the vaccine ever was introduced. We can also look at another chart that shows uh, some of the other diseases when we look at uh, were they declining before we, um, at least the death rate, were they declining before the vaccines were introduced? And so we look at um, all of them that are on this chart are pretty much on the decline before we see the vaccine introduced. And again, we can attribute that to a lot of things, but probably the biggest things are stress levels going down in the country, nutrition going up, sanitation improving, and refrigeration being introduced. And so again, you can see that uh, each different uh, disease from measles to scarlet fever to typhoid to whooping cough to diphtheria and not all of those have uh, a vaccine attached to them but you can see that those diseases were all declining as you see um, a nation improve in, um, in nutrition, refrigeration and, and in sanitation and again stress levels you look at uh, uh, two world wars having gone through those stress levels were pretty high during those times but uh, and world travel was going was was increased as well yet you still see those uh, disease, diseases on the decline so the truth when it comes to looking at the uh, public policy for vaccines and what people how people defend vaccines is that they do say that uh, vaccines have eradicated many of the diseases yet we can see according to the uh, the uh, graphs that we showed that uh, the incident rate of some of these uh, um, diseases were on the decline before the uh, vaccine was ever introduced and uh, definitely the mortality rates of these diseases were on the decline as well so it makes you it questions whether there needed to be a vaccine for a disease that uh, may be inconvenient and uh, and cause some um, symptoms and uh, not an easy disease to necessarily go through but yet uh, not one that would cause death and so is there really a need for a vaccine for a disease like that and so we can see that the mortality rates of, uh, of many of these uh, diseases were on the decline again before the vaccine was introduced <clears throat> and we can also see when we look at the polio uh, vaccine and we look at the the cases of polio is there could have been potential 
uh, misdiagnosis, uh, they could have been exposed to DDT, causing uh, polio-like symptoms, yet they uh, ruled it as polio. So we don't know if that's the case or not, again, because they stopped uh, culturing to see whether people had polio. They just went by what the symptoms were. Now, when we look at uh, have vaccines eradicated diseases, uh, we, look, we need to look at not just mortality, we do need to look at incidence. And when you look at uh, certain diseases, uh, even measles, when we look at the rate of measles, measles has definitely declined since uh, introducing vaccines. And so we can see that the vaccine has decreased the incidence of measles. It used to be that pretty much everybody would get measles. Uh, same with chickenpox. We look at chickenpox. When I was growing up, everybody had chickenpox. And it really wasn't a big deal. And you look at back at the, the measles, yes, it was an uncomfortable thing. And yes, it uh, did have some, some pretty um, um, significant side effects. But um, most people uh, recovered completely. And so we, we look at, uh, um, yes, they did have decreased the incidence of the disease, but did it really need a vaccine for that disease? And so we can see that chickenpox is really a thing of the past. And, uh, and meningitis, um, when we look at uh, uh, Hib, the Hib vaccine has done a great job at uh, practically eliminating meningitis in babies. So again, we can see that there are some vaccines that are effective. And as we go through each individual uh, disease and the vaccine that goes along with it, we will talk about uh, um, how effective uh, it is and what, uh, what the statistics do show. But again, we have to look at not just has the disease been eradicated, we also need to look at um, did it need to be eradicated because that raises another question. We have to ask the question is should the disease be eradicated? Now for some of you, for some people that's, that's tough to, uh, to figure out why would we ever want to let a disease, um, why would we ever let a person get a disease? If we could eliminate it, why let their body get it? Well, what we need to look at is could having one disease protect uh, against having another disease? And so we can look at chickenpox. They did a study recently in uh, the Journal of <coughs> excuse me, Pediatric Asthma, Allergy, and Immunology back in March of 2009, and they showed that having chickenpox early in life has been shown to have a protective role against the development of asthma and atopy in children. Atopy is um, allergies, uh, having allergic type of reactions. And so when we look at uh, getting one disease, it can actually help the body have a, a nice immune response so that that person wouldn't get that, uh, uh, wouldn't have another issue. So are we trading uh, uh, an acute illness such as chickenpox, which uh, very few people die from chickenpox. Uh, if you look at CDC uh, statistics, you're looking at uh, over the course of since they've been tracking uh, people uh, dying from diseases and such, tracking diseases, um, probably around 100 people have died from chickenpox. And so we know that not too many people die from chickenpox. Having chickenpox, yes, is, un is uncomfortable. And for some, it's really significantly painful and they have scars from it even but we also know that uh, that it does according to the study help prevent uh, people from getting asthma and allergies and so we can see that it can be beneficial to have that acute illness to prevent a chronic illness and that's what we have to look at is by allowing uh, people to have these these diseases does this prevent chronic illnesses and this could this be one of the reasons why we're seeing such a uh, a huge increase in chronic illnesses in this country or is it partially um, some of the reasons why we're seeing more kids with allergies and asthma because those uh, those numbers are skyrocketing in this country and according to this study it very well could be. In conclusion then in answering that question have vaccines eradicated diseases and we can absolutely say we're certain that some uh, diseases have been eradicated with a vaccine and we can see some are questionable whether the vaccine really did eradicate the disease and we look at uh, smallpox maybe it was a combination of vaccinations and quarantine maybe it was just quarantine and so it's uh, we don't know for sure from uh, looking at uh, the procedures we know that vaccinations alone was not doing it 
And, uh, and so we can see that uh, some of the vaccines have eradicated diseases. We can see that some probably have not eradicated the disease, but it was other things. And again, we also, it does raise the question, uh, when we eradicated a disease, is that necessarily a good thing, or should we have left it alone and uh, just made it so people could uh, do much better at fighting it off and getting rid of it on their own so it would help create a, a healthy and strong immune system. And so that does raise a question that uh, we need to have more research on that I don't think that enough is happening, but you can see that they are looking at it when you look at that chicken pox uh, uh, study. The other thing we have to look at too, and we raise that question when, uh, when looking at the chicken pox vaccine, are, are these vaccines that are eradicating one disease just eradicating one disease to create a, a new disease and potentially a chronic uh, disease that a person has to live the rest of their life with. And so what we're going to be talking about in the next video is that exact question is, can a vaccine itself cause harm? Uh, not just the, the vaccine with the chemicals and such, but then looking at can it cause harm in creating uh, long-term illnesses as well. And that's something that's uh, that it has to be weighed into the whole picture of whether you choose to vaccinate or not. And so that's going to be next week. The, the next uh, uh, video that we're going to be doing is going to talk about whether vaccines uh, do cause harm or not. So I hope you enjoyed this. And, uh, and if you haven't seen some of the other uh, videos yet, uh, they can be uh, checked out on YouTube as well. And so hopefully you're having a great day and God bless.